I'm here in New York before Maker Faire. I'm Alex Glow with Hackster. Uh, and last night I went to a sweet meetup at the Kickstarter HQ in Brooklyn. And there, I actually got there pretty late, so I missed the talks. But I met a bunch of cool people, uh, including hanging out with a bunch of people from the Tindy crew, as well as Osh Park, uh, Beagle Bone, and more. So, uh, Brian Benchoff from Tindy has created a cool little LED blinky badge with a design by Andrew Soa, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> and it's really cool. Uh, Brian is the guy who's famous for creating the Mr. Robot badge that took DEF CON by storm this year, uh, which is a pretty cool story. I, I recommend that you look it up. The design is incredible. Uh, it's all done in KiCad, and the, the image itself for the Mr. Robot badge took, I think, I believe dozens of hours, like 20 hours or something. So uh, it's a work of art, it's genius, it's gorgeous, and you should check it out. So anyway, we've got this badge. This is V2 of the LED Blinky badge. Uh, I've got some before and after pictures, pictures for you. Uh, but in the meantime, you can follow along, find this thing uh, on Hackaday uh, and on Tindy as well. They're working on version three. They are not super happy with the silk screening on this one for some reason. I'm not sure why, because I think it looks gorgeous. Uh, to be honest, I think the first version looks amazing as well, but someone who spends you know, 20 plus hours on PCB design uh, just for the graphics is probably going to be more picky than I am. Um, I've got all this stuff all over my desk, as you'll notice, because it is hotel hacking. The desk here is shiny, and I'm trying to keep down the glare so we can actually see what we're doing. So, uh, without further ado, we've got this cool little um, pin backing thing. We've got a battery holder. It also comes with a battery. Thank you, batteries included. That's so good. Uh, and there are also a couple of little LEDs, which I believe that these actually are the kind that have circuitry embedded that makes them uh, blink on and off because they do it on their own and the PCB, as you will see, does not appear to have any existing soldered surface mount components on it, meaning that uh, you know they must be this kind of LEDs that have the blinking incorporated. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do this without the instructions. Am I? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Can we figure this out? We can totally figure this out. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. So we've got you know this place for the pin backing it looks like we've got this these two LEDs um, the negative side as usual go has a flat side and so do the LEDs assuming presumably they don't actually these ones don't um, they're a little special but they do have a shorter leg which means that that corresponds to the negative side pole thing so they're gonna go like that except on the other side <laughs> and then we also have the place to put the battery holder, and as you can see, there's traces on here. Uh, you can see where the pores are separate. This is going to be the power um, part, and then the center part is going to be ground, uh, which also determines which way we put the battery in. Uh, but you can tell that because these little flat guys are in the center, attached to this big pore on the PCB. Um, cool! So this should be a pretty quick build. Uh, and hopefully we aren't going to have too much in terms of network problems. Have you seen the Parks and Recreation video of the like unscripted line from uh, what's his face, Chris Pratt, where he's like, Leslie, I typed your symptoms into the thing up here. He's looking at a computer, and he's like, and it says you could have network connectivity issues. Anyway, apparently he totally ad-libbed that line, uh, but it came out amazing, and all the writers are mad because it's like the funniest line on the show. Anyway. We've all heard that story. Maybe you haven't. It's a great show. You should watch it. Parks and Recreation. This is going to be a little bit challenging because I don't have a vice here or a clamp or a third hand or anything. Uh, this is so cute. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, squeeze these little guys onto here as much as I can uh, and then try and solder them on securely, just resting here on the desk. Um, what I have here is a USB soldering iron. Um, Make actually put out a, I think it was Donald Bell put out a comparison recently of different 
uh, portable soldering irons, and I've used all three of the types that he recommended. Actually, no, I've used two of them, and I bought the other one because I thought it looked great. Um, this one is USB powered. It's got this little metal nubbin where if you stop touching the nubbin for more than 15 seconds, it turns off and it also heats up again pretty quickly. So that's a good safety feature. And I've just got plugged in to this, um, this mobile charger. Uh, there's another one that's got butane that I love from Dremel. It comes with all these attachments and I've had one for ages because I, I needed to solder stuff, you know, on bikes and stuff where you don't want to be juggling wires and whatnot. Um, and that thing works great, but I don't want to bring like, you know, butane gas on a plane, that would be very illegal. <laughs> um, so, this seems to be working out okay. And then the third one is this little USB guy. I actually had one of these for New York Maker Faire last year. I think because I also showed up without a soldering iron then, and there's this great little shop called Tinkersphere that uh, carries all kinds of cool stuff to get you set up when you're on the road doing hardware stuff. Oof. However, they only sell lead free solder. And this guy has like a little bit of, you know, power issues and whatnot, but uh, it still works okay. Yeah, it works okay. Okay. Um, I've got the, the fan, the vent thingy, whatever you call it, <laughs> uh, for the, the hotel room on right next to me. And I am not going to be soldering very much, or I'd be a little bit more careful about the smoke here. Uh, one of the hazards of hotel hacking, be careful of your ventilation. If you have windows, open them. Um, yeah, so this is also lead-free solder, which means that it likes to clump up and doesn't really like staying melted and has this really weird melting point where it's a very sharp cutoff, which can make it really awkward to work with. But the nice thing is also that it, um, because of that, it uh, hardens extremely quickly and uh, goes solid so you don't have to sort of like sit there for a second and kind of blow on it like you might have to do with lead solder rosin core lead solder, like the typical kind you'll find. Um, so this guy, you've got a battery holder and the positive side is up. It's got a little plus sign on the top to indicate that. And also you'll see that the it's not symmetrical. Um, well, it is this way, but not this way. Uh, and the it has these little tabs here to hold the battery in. You're gonna shove it in from this side uh, and then you use this open space to push it out when you're done. So I'm going to orient that towards the outside here. Oh, we can use that as a little holder. I'm not going to be applying anywhere near enough heat for nearly long enough to make this hazardous, so don't don't judge me for soldering on top. Okay, I'm just going to flip it over. Okay, I'm just going to put this paper on top. Then we'll all feel good about ourselves. <laughs> um, Maker Faire starts tomorrow, so tonight is all just like building stuff and whatnot. Um, how shall we do this? I'm going to tin the pads first. And then I'm going to attach this guy. And hopefully it won't be a huge pain in the butt. Um, holding this down is going to be interesting. Again, I don't have my usual tool set. So what I'm going to do is just take this plier or wire cutter and use that to like hold it down in place while I do this. Because I'm going to have to apply heat for a little bit, I'm assuming, in order to make sure that it actually all the pieces get heated up. Well now these are tin so they're like little bumps and it's hard to keep it on top of there. Come on, stay in place. Oh, I see. It's also not totally an intuitive size. I maybe should have tinned the battery holder as well first, but I didn't, so this is where we are. We're gonna live with our choices. <laughs> okay, this is working out better than I expected. Let's hold this guy down, apply the heat, and it melts! Oh, gorgeous! This is not so bad at all! Uh, I wish I could, maybe I can get this a little closer up for you. I was expecting to solder more sort of, you know, uh, above the desk. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's good. Get those reflections out of there. Okay, it's a little bit darker, but maybe we can fix that for you. Stand by for really weird light stuff. Okay. Brightness. Yes, good. Okay. 
I like to do a new movie villain voice every now and then. Um, cool. So let's see. Where were we? We're going to add a little bit more solder onto here so that it's structurally stable as well as electrically attached. Come on. Yes. Good. Making sure that I'm actually heating up this battery holder here. And I'll know that when it, uh, sort of, the, the solder flows smoothly onto it, which is sort of doing right now. There we go. Yeah, so you can see, uh, because this solder has such a weird cutoff point, um, the left side of it has sort of flowed onto the battery holder, and the right side really hasn't, but it's good enough. There's some cool phrase uh, someone introduced me to, which is good enough, or close enough for rock and roll. And I'm not quite sure what it means, but um, I like it. So this is going to be like that. It's going to be close enough for rock and roll. Close enough for Maker Faire. Oh my god, my soldering iron is freaking out and getting stuck and stuff. Yeah, like this this little guy is, is cool and all and very portable, but honestly, my experience with it has not been stellar. Uh, it tends to not have quite as much power and oomph as I would want. And I'm sure that part of that has to do with the current, um, the amperage of the adapter that I'm plugging into into the wall. Like this one has um, the capacity to give 1.2 amps. Uh, this adapter thingy, and my guess is that the soldering iron wants a bit more in order to actually be able to efficiently melt the stuff and really heat up. But guess what? This is what I've got, so yeah. What we're gonna do next is the final step of putting the pin backing on. I'm going to remove this from the uh, big backing piece because that's gonna be a heat sink. And what I want is for the whole thing to heat up. So once again, I'm going to tin this. Ah! Again, really feeling the absence of a third hand here. But that's what hotel hacks are about. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Um, doing the best with what you got. And it's kind of fun, you know, challenging yourself that way. <laughs> she says as her camera shakes. Um, I'm going to tin the, the pin back as well this time, I think. And that means that I'm going to stick it into here. Ah! <laughs> oh no, that's not going to work, huh? Okay. Well, oh, here's a little hole I can put it in. That's also going to act as a heat sink, but at least it won't be quite as much contact. Oh, that was pretty quick. Oh, my goodness, okay. Let's just grab this guy. <laughs> He's sort of stuck onto the end of the tip there. Doop. Okay, and make contact. This may end up a bit crooked because the lead-free solder really does not want to melt. Oh my god. I hate this stuff so much. I mean, it's good because like it's less likely to poison you, and that's a good thing. But, like, practically... It's so frustrating. Um, however, it's still fun. I've just added a bit of solder to my soldering iron in order to try and get better thermal contact. Because this is really not lighting. Oh, there we go. Come on. Don't be crooked. Come on, we can do the thing. Uh, nope. Nope, the whole thing is acting like a big heat sink. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> hotel hacks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I really wish that a I had lead, did, and rosin core solder, or b I had a soldering iron with more power, because both of those are kind of hindering me. But we have the thing assembled, so let's cut off these extra legs here. Boom. That sounds so grim. 
If you want to be really safe, then during this step you would be wearing safety goggles so you don't get little bits of... I mean, if you want to be really safe, you would be wearing safety goggles the whole time so you don't get little gobs of solder in your face by accident. I really hope I did those the right way around. I think I did. <laughs> I think I was careful. But, let's check. Uh, let's put the battery in. Doesn't want to come out of the package. Come on. So again, um, the battery holder has the plus sign on the top here, so that's where I'm going to put this battery uh, with the flat, um, boring side up. <laughs> the cool side with the little uh, texture and the ring and stuff is the ground side. Oh, yeah, awesome! Check it out. Sweet. Well, awesome. Thanks, Brian, for sharing this cool badge. Uh, it's a complete party. This is a wearable party and I'm really excited to give it a spin. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more Maker Faire coverage. I'm going to be actually working on a pair of blinky earrings tonight and we'll see if that actually ends up successful.